Thank you for having me here today and what's shaping up to be a beautiful day in Stone Harbor. Last year, I was here to present the borough's flood mitigation and storm sewer master plan, which was formally adopted in the spring of 2022. I am here today to inform you of the borough's progress made over the last year regarding <coughs> flood mitigation. It's entitled Implementation Update 2023. One of the first actions the boroughs comp completed was the creation of a new flood mitigation committee. That committee consisted of council members Moore, Gensimer, and Dallahan, Manny Parada, myself, Justine Herzog, Wally Bishop, Jeff Woolery, and Jim Fisher. This committee reviewed and completed three items over the last year. The first one was the uh, recommendation that the 93rd Street storm sewer pump station be abandoned as it was designed. The second item was put a, uh, a significant focus on tidal flooding and evaluate existing bulkhead elevations and their susceptibility to flooding. Before we proceed, let's complete a refresher on the types of flood, flooding challenges that face the borough. Essentially, there's two of them. The first one is tidal flooding. That is a flooding which occurs from the uh, rise of tide water that breaches through st our storm sewer system or over our bulkheads, and in the case of structurally compromised bulkheads, through them. Rainfall, that's pretty simple. With water that falls down from the sky, resides on our roadways and makes itself to an outfall. And each one of those uh, types of flooding has their own mitigation approaches. As I'm sure everyone here in this room knows, our biggest challenge is tidal flooding. It's the, uh, the nuisance flooding that we see. We see it all the time. It could be in the middle of the summer on a sunny day, and um, you have like a photograph like you see right here where water creeps up out of the storm sewer system. As identified in the borough's flood mitigation and storm sewer master plan, we, rec we recommended that the borough select and install more reliable storm sewer valves, and one option was the implementation of a mechanically operated valve. The importance of proper tide control is shown on this slide, which was presented last year. The slide on the right shows how streets and properties flood at the same elevation of the tide out in the bay or at the ocean front. And the slide on the right shows a uh, properly installed and functioning valve that's preventing that exact same flooding event. We use the analogy of the uh, valves as a foundation to a house. It's, it's the very first thing that we think we need to do and everything is built upon that. And that's why that focus was placed on that this year. The borough embarked on a tidal valve pilot project that took into account effectiveness, cost, durability, ease of installation, maintenance and operation. And there were several valves considered. Three valves were selected for the pilot project and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, those three valves are a knife valve, which is essentially a valve that resembles a knife that closes. It's very robust. A gate valve, which is a typical valve you would see in the street with a water main, and a butterfly valve that actually turns sideways. We feel at the end of the day that the knife valve will be the superior valve uh, for the borough to use moving forward. The area between 93rd Street and 95th Street was selected for the pilot project due to this area being a peninsula and containing three bay-sized storm sewer outfalls that were grouped closely together. Prior to constructing the project, we analyzed this local drainage area and determined that the lowest bulkhead elevation was 4.5 based on the data that was completed by Stockton several years ago, which was our controlling elevation. Uh, we developed a flood prediction map that showed the depth of flood water at this tide elevation of 4.5, because that was our critical point. Anything over than that, um, we really couldn't deal with effectively until those bulkheads were raised. This flood depth prediction map was validated by on-site observations <coughs> completed by Jeff Woolery and Justine Herzog. 
So essentially the photos corroborated our prediction. Prior to the final design of the project, uh, this three-dimensional rendering was developed to illustrate the proposed valves with an emphasis on the protrusion of a valve changer, uh, valve chamber. Construction of this project there we go, is currently underway and is anticipated to be completed in the next month. It may take a while for that night valve uh, to get in, which may end up being in the fall, but in the meantime, we'll put a temporary valve in there and that allow us to complete the pilot project and uh, assess its potential success. Lastly, the borough reviewed the bulkhead data, which showed the elevations of private and public bulkheads in the critical areas susceptible to flooding. The borough also completed an updated survey of the borough-owned bulkheads, which we completed this uh, within the last several months, <clears throat> which allowed the borough to put into effect a capital plan and assess where they had their vulnerabil vulnerabilities. Uh, the borough also continued to notify private property owners who need to raise their bulkheads. That was a, um, a process that was put into place several years ago. I believe it's about four or five years now the borough's new bulkhead ordinance has that mandate for raising bulkheads and there was a notification process for that. Um, another positive, very positive uh, piece of news to report on that is that the borough was notified that two FEMA grants totaling over $300,000 was allotted to the borough for further flood mitigation studies, which will include bulkhead uh, analysis and review and how to work with private property owners on making that happen. These photos here show you how we're all in it together. The borough could have properly functioning bulkheads at the right elevations and conform to their own ordinance. But if right next door to that bulkhead, we have this condition, it's, it's for not. Okay, next steps. Uh, complete installation of the pilot valves. That project should be completed, like I said, uh, within the next month. Assess the valve performance. Prioritize the next outfall pipe valve installations. We're going to see how this goes and where we go next. Continue to improve flood zone elevation data. Continue to collect visual flood data. Prioritize bulkhead replacements and ensure ordinance compliance. And begin work on the uh, rainfall aspects of flooding with potential pump stations and underground reservoirs. And again, those two FEMA grants, which apply on the bay side of the borough from 80th Street to 99th Street will be a huge help in allowing us to actually put our fingers in and do some serious engineering on these issues. That's my presentation. Great. Thank you.